Good day, this is Dr. John Bennett from Miami. We're making a, a promotional video for uh, Peter Kerbin's new online course, Programming for Doctors, uh, which he's going to start January 2nd. And we'll just ask a few quick questions of Peter uh, to learn what it's all about. Greetings, Peter. Uh, yeah. Why why are you making this, this uh, course? Well, actually, I wrote an editorial in Social Neurology International last year about uh, why I am in favor of physicians doing computer programming. And it gave quite a lot of response, people sending me questions about, well, I like your idea, I do agree, how should I start? And this whole course is about how should I start? The reason why I think programming is important for doctors is because you take quite a lot of years at medical school, then at the residency, to get knowledge, to get experience. And why you find it normal to use a computer or email or Word, uh, the next thing is being able to uh, give instructions more interactively to a computer and let the computer help you in doing your work. That could be several things. That could be developing an app or some data science application. Uh, you can think about a lot of things if you can ask the computer for help. You just need to speak the language which the computer understands. And uh, you can make things as difficult as you want, but the, the foundation, the basic skills in programming are actually not that difficult. And I think it's a pity if people have a lot of good ideas which they don't realize because they cannot do it themselves and it takes too much money to hire a programmer, which in my opinion is not necessary in quite a lot of cases. Okay, you have it broken up into 12 modules, correct? And yes. You're and you're going to do 30 to 60 minutes uh, and cover the basics of programming? Yes. And it's free, correct? Yes, completely free, open access. Okay. Um, and after someone goes through that course, they might have a chance of doing a, a simple program? Yes, you can do it in the browser. If you want, I can show it to you. Sure. And I'm going to put on my screen. Okay. You should see appearing the screen of my browser window at the moment. Okay. Yes, it, it's appearing. Okay. Um, for now, we just have a short link, and we might change it into something different. We'll put this clearly on a website. Uh, but if you go to this site, you come to the website of Trinkets. And here you see what is currently still hidden. If you go to the website at this moment, you just see the teaser, which gives you a short introduction. And I prepared the whole content, and I'll start releasing it from January the 2nd. To give you a short idea, um, the good thing about Trinket, and that's the reason why I like it, you don't need to install any kind of software. You can do some simple programming inside the browser. We're going to use a programming language called Python. It's open source, it's free, it works on all platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, Mac OS X. And it's used a lot in the scientific world also. Actually, it's one of the top three languages used at Google, too. Mm -hmm. Now, here you see an example of a window, and here actually is one of these windows. And there is a good habit if you start doing programming to start doing a hello world exercise. I changed it a little. So, for example, giving a simple command, print hello doctor, will print on the screen this text. Obviously, it is not a very difficult exercise. It's not very useful, maybe, but it's a good thing to know how you can display text on the screen. We're going to start with very simple examples like this, and I'm going to explain why this is wrong, because if I would try to run this exercise, you get an error. I'll give you some more instructions, basically about printing simple text. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, we're going to do a little more. We're going to do some mathematical operators. And then we go, and this is one of the things which I missed in many of the programming uh, books or websites which I read. Most of the content on general programming stuff isn't focused on physician needs. So you get quite a lot of text manipulations, which we don't use, quite a lot of calculations, which we don't use, whereas just some examples which also you can connect and identify with, you don't find. So what I did here, for example, calculate a body mass index, which is already a good thing to do. Um, put in a body mass, put in a body length, and have the computer help you calculate something. Okay. Now, yes? Go ahead, Peter. Okay, well, this already looks quite impressive, and you will be doing this in the second week. Actually, it's not very difficult. What we are doing here is saying, okay, we can ask you what is the body mass. So in this case, in kilograms, what is the body length? 
and you get your calculated body mass. Now you already can understand if you will do this and if you have a little more complex algorithm behind, mm -hmm. you can already be helped by a computer tremendously because for the repetitive work, computer is very helpful. Now, the good thing, besides calculations, you can also put in some logic. And if I scroll to this, to comparative example, uh, let's see. Here it is. Now, I did the same. You still have the body mass index calculator. But it's not only now giving you the result of the calculation, it's also giving you an advice based on some decision logic which you put in. So you can calculate the body mass index and directly giving advice on whether the weight is healthy or maybe you need to lose some weight, gain some weight. We're going to cover repetitive instructions, which are called loops, which means if I would, for example, write to uh, want to write down the numbers from 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. I can do print 1, print 2, print 3, but I can also use a repetitive instruction. And if I want not to 10, but 1,000, you see it's much quicker than I could do it by hand. This is one of the good things from the computer. So we're going to cover some neurosurgical examples, actually, to demonstrate that this works also for text. And we're going to play around a little with functions, repetitive uh, re reusing code, and do a little fun in the number guessing game, which is not very medically useful, but it's a good exercise, actually, to already show you that after two weeks, while we covered these topics, you can do quite already some useful stuff. And I will give you some instructions where to go from here. Uh, if you want to continue already on your own, how can you do that? For example, and if you want to use a different programming language, yeah, what, uh, the, the basic stuff which we discussed will be the same in a different language, just the syntax is slightly different. And in the end, if you like, you would do me a big favor by filling in the survey, which helps to decide on whether this crash course should have a sequel or maybe not. Okay. Very good, Peter. Very good, Peter. Uh, that's a good overview. And before we close, uh, just one question. Uh, the potential student need, does not need any knowledge at all of coding to take the no, course? No. no. Just a good temper and a browser with internet connection. That's it. Very, very good. Okay, we'll keep in touch, everyone, to, to tell you what exactly January 2nd, exactly the time and the location. So thank you very much.